Maybe we could be each other's soulmates. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the times Charlotte embraced new experiences and times she could be unjustly narrow-minded and critical. While we love her sex-positive attitude in And Just Like That, we'll only be focusing on the original Sex and the City television series today. It is important that you take care of your own needs. Tom, um, stop, stop. Number five, open-minded, posing for some intimate art. Charlotte is a beautiful woman, but she tends to be the least body confident of the group. Charlotte, sweetie, you have a beautiful figure. Really? Yes. Then why was that woman in the steam room looking at me like my thighs were too big? That probably has something to do with her conservative upbringing. However, then she meets artist Neville Morgan. His bold celebration of the human form really shakes up her beliefs and makes her see the power of feeling free in her own skin. The source of all life and pleasure and beauty. So despite her usual discomfort, Charlotte decides to take a leap and lets him paint her. A bold move for someone who doesn't even feel comfortable disrobing at the spa or examining her own anatomy. Seeing her confidently let go of her preconceptions for the sake of art is nothing short of extraordinary. Is this right? No? <laughs> what? Number five, really wasn't, treating Harry unfairly. Charlotte could be somewhat shallow when it came to romance, and Harry Goldenblatt was a far cry from the guys she was typically attracted to. And boy, does she let him know it. Their relationship starts off just physical, but once they're officially dating, she tries to change him. There's nothing on my face, nothing in my teeth. I'm sure you'll hate my moves on the dance floor, but that is the risk that every man must take. Sure, she's willing to make significant life changes to be with him. However, she still seems to have it in the back of her mind that she could do better. And during one heated Friday night dinner, she tells him as much. Do you know what people out there think when they see us together, do you? Yeah, I know what people are thinking. I just didn't think you were one of them. It's heartbreaking to hear that she doesn't appreciate what a great guy she has just because he doesn't look like her dream fairy tale prince. To think I bought a ring. The Mets won that night 5 to 4, but Charlotte lost everything that mattered to her. Number 4, open-minded, delving into gender expression. This episode is infamous for its closed-minded and inaccurate views on sexuality, with Charlotte and her friends all playing a part. You're not marrying the guy, you're making out with him. Enjoy it, don't worry about the labels. Uh, you're right, you're right. I'm very into labels, gay, straight. Pick a side and stay there. So it's surprising to see Charlotte embrace the idea of gender fluidity. At the start of the episode, her friends gather at her gallery for a drag king exhibition. The artist explains his inspiration for the photos, and we don't hear her telling him anything about labels or picking a side. I feel we have dual powers within each of us. Men could be very female, and women could be very male. Gender's an illusion, sometimes a very beautiful illusion. Later on, she even agrees to pose for him. Sure, it takes her a beat to feel comfortable in her new look. Still, we appreciate that once again, she can set aside old presumptions and open her mind to something new. Rich, you're powerful. You eat guys like me for lunch. How are you feeling now? I think I need a bigger sock. Number four, really wasn't, accepting class disparities. When Miranda feels uneasy about the income gap between her and Steve, she brings it up for discussion with her friends. While Carrie and Samantha think that class and income have little to no relevance in the success of a relationship, Charlotte begs to differ. Rich men date not so rich women all the time. I mean, come on, look at me in big. It's not about money, it's about compatibility. Yeah, but it's normal for the guy to have more money. She clings to old-fashioned notions that it's fine for men to out-earn women, and that class differences matter as much as compatibility in a relationship. Even for the late 90s, she sounds grossly out of touch. You're talking about more than a difference in income. You're talking about a difference in background and education. This guy is working class. Working class? It's not that she's entirely wrong about the role of class in society. However, she seems happy to roll with it instead of pushing for equality. But you're trying to pretend that we live in a classless society, and we don't. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Marie Antoinette, we get the picture. Number three, open-minded, putting the work into her marriage. When Charlotte and Trey separated, no one could fault her for not fighting for this relationship with everything she had. This is me. I'm not a Madonna and I'm not a I'm your wife. Sure, there were arguably more red flags than a beach on a stormy day before their nuptials, but they went ahead and tied the knot anyway. However, Trey's issues with intimacy aren't fixed by the exchange of wedding rings. We love each other and we're married now. Rebecca and Schooner belong together. They need each other, please. Charlotte does everything she can to try and improve the situation, from indulging his fantasies to attending therapy. For someone who tends to be more reserved in the intimacy department, she really puts her all into trying to make things work. We're glad Trey could appreciate how hard she fought for them, at least for now. One other thing. What? I married you because I knew I'd never find anyone as wonderful as you to marry. Number three, really wasn't, dismissing Samantha's relationship. Remember when Samantha started dating Maria, an artist she met at Charlotte's gallery? Remember how disparaging her friends were about it all? Yeah, no one comes off well here. Anyway, when Carrie tells Charlotte and Miranda that Samantha was hurt by their attitudes, Charlotte doubles down on her dismissiveness. When she gets here, we have to talk about her relationship. She was kind of mad we didn't take it seriously last time. Oh, please. She isn't having a relationship. She's just doing this to bug us. Then, when Samantha tries to talk about it, Charlotte is the first one to shut her down. Repeatedly. We know both women have different views on intimacy, but we don't think it was just Samantha's colorful descriptions that were making her uncomfortable. Okay, put that away. After all, we didn't see her get into a whole tiz when Carrie dished on her intense night with a guy earlier. I had <laughs> the most intense orgasm of my entire life. <laughs> I did my laundry. Continue. Number two, open-minded, exploring intimate boundaries. Charlotte, who is often seen as the most traditional among her friends, has surprised us time and time again with her adventurous side. Charlotte, you are such a turn-on and you have no idea. You're giving off this sexual energy all the time. A vibe like you got a fire inside of you. In fact, we'd say that she's just as likely, if not more so, as some of her friends to embrace her sexuality. There's the time she goes out with a man known for his unique gifts in making women um, purr. How about when she pretended to be in her 20s for a fling? What are you, 25 now? Good morning. No, 27. And who could forget the almost threesome? She also delves into a spot of self-love. Throughout the series, Charlotte has shown an interest in exploring all sorts of bedroom activities. Yet she's also very clear on her boundaries, which is just as important. Can't you just do it for me? Would you really want me to do something that I didn't want to do? You'll get used to it. No, I won't. Number two, really wasn't, playing by the rules. That being said, we can understand why people tend to think of her as the antithesis of Samantha. After all, let us remind you how she's first introduced to viewers. Most men are threatened by successful women. If you want to get these guys, you have to keep your mouth shut and play by the rules. Yeesh, right? Indeed, Charlotte was all about the rules. If marriage was the prize, Charlotte was playing to win. In 1995, authors Ellen Fine and Sherry Schneider released The Rules, time-tested secrets for capturing the heart of Mr. Wright. Wait a second. I thought you were serious about this guy. You can't sleep with him on the first date. Oh, God. Here she goes again with The Rules. The women who in the early days, it often felt like Charlotte had studied the text devoutly. She didn't just live by the rules, she was also on a mission to convert her friends to the gospel of dating decorum. It says that if you really want to get married, you shouldn't be spending so much time around dysfunctional single women. Marriage Incorporated, how to apply successful business strategies to finding a husband. Whatever happened to I choose my choice, eh, Charlotte? Number one, open-minded, finding your soulmates. In one of the most memorable Sex in the City moments, the ladies gather at a coffee shop to celebrate Carrie's birthday. It felt really sad not to have a man in my life who cares about me. 
No special guy to wish me happy birthday. It had been a disastrous evening for the birthday girl after everyone got held up for various reasons, leaving her feeling very alone. As she shares this with her friends, it's Charlotte who offers the sweetest consolation. Given how obsessed she can be with finding her forever partner, it's surprising to hear her flip the script on the whole soulmate idea. Maybe we could be each other's soulmates. And then we could let men be just these great, nice guys to have fun with. She reminds her friends that while men may come and go, their bond is unbreakable. Well, that sounds like a plan. It's a moment so heartwarming, it's like a warm hug wrapped around your soul. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, really wasn't, judging Samantha. As we mentioned before, Charlotte and Samantha are typically considered polar opposites in the love department. Stop it! Why do you always have to talk about sex like that? Because I can. Okay, girl, simmer down. Mommy hasn't had her caffeine yet. Charlotte's rule book often clashes with Sam's make your own rules approach. While Sam may raise an eyebrow at Charlotte's choices, she's not one to rain on her parade. Charlotte, though? Well, let's just say her opinion of Samantha's love life is not exactly a secret. Oh my God, you're such a- A what? What am I, Charlotte? When are you gonna learn that you can't just sleep with everything that comes along? We've already talked about Maria, but what about how mean she was after Samantha and her brother hooked up? What about all the time she basically reprimands Samantha for her more free-spirited love life? Even Charlotte can't deny that sometimes rules are made to be broken. And who taught her that? You guessed it, Samantha. Charlotte realized how much they'd all changed since college. Her friends had become frenemies, and to them, she had become Samantha. Which Charlotte moment surprised you and which made you cringe? Let us know in the comments. What's wrong with you, Charlotte? You're such a... What? What am I, Sydney? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.